welcome everybody to the second annual American Justice Summit. It's an honor to be back at the renowned Center for Justice Education and Scholarship, the John Jay College of Criminal Justice, so brilliantly led by my co-host, President Jeremy Travis. And welcome too to everybody watching us on Vice News. When we first gathered here last year, it was to understand how the United States model of freedom and democracy had come to incarcerate more of its citizens than any other nation in the world, a shocking 2.3 million Americans. It was clear then, has been for years, that we needed profound reform. And now it's beginning to happen. We have truly entered a moment in criminal justice history. Just this week, the Supreme Court ruled six to three that inmates serving life in prison for murders they committed as teenagers have the right to seek new sentences or parole. On Monday, President Obama announced plans to expand mental health treatment in federal prisons and ban solitary confinement for juvenile offenders. And there's just been this steady drumbeat all year. Groups across the political aisle from the ACLU to Freedom Works and Coke Industries are working together to reduce prison populations, reduce recidivism, and reform sentencing guidelines. There's bipartisan backing for a bill in Congress that would loosen mandatory minimum sentencing laws at last. And how good was it to hear the words criminal justice reform coming from the lips of many presidential candidates, even last night? All this is testament to reformers and legislators who've worked so hard to reverse the trends. Many of you are here today, and many of you will speak on stage from head and from heart. Let's give them all a hand now. <laughs> Still, there have been shocks this year to dramatize the scope of the challenges. The list of people who've died through contact with the police has grown, further fraying the relationship between law enforcement and communities of color. We know their names. Freddie Gray. Walter Scott, Philip White, Betty Jones, just some of the heartbreaking losses. We're very honored today that Sandra Bland's mother and sister and that Betty Jones's nephew flew in from Chicago to speak with us. And we also welcome Vanita Browder, mother of Khalif, who suffered so cruelly in Rikers Island before he took his own life. The senseless scourge of gun violence, for which we have a million excuses and zero action, has been appalling. According to the Gun Violence Archive in 2015 alone, guns killed at least 13,370 Americans, among them 330 innocents who died in mass shootings. We welcome today Sandy Phillips, whose daughter Je Jessie perished in the 2012 attack on the movie theater in Aurora, Colorado by James Holmes. These are among the issues on our agenda today, and how we respond to them as a nation will define our values as Americans. We can't get anywhere without practical understanding, clearly, so we're fortunate to be able to draw on the experiences of leaders that are joining us today, such as former Attorney General Eric Holder, U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara, Police Commissioner Bill Bratton, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, and the amazing performance artist and philanthropist Usher. We'll hear from many other compelling voices too. From Dean Strang, the defense attorney we've come to know from Netflix's Making a Murderer, to Brittany Packnett, the fiery activist of Black Lives Matter. I applaud the public-spirited organizations that have come together to support the American Justice Summit today. I'd like to acknowledge with thanks our generous leadership sponsors, the Ford Foundation and the John Jay Co College of Criminal Justice, our host. Our supporting sponsor, Thomson Reuters, and our accomplished and capable partners, Just Leadership USA, The Marshall Project, Vice News, and WNYC. And thank you, my brilliant co-hosts who've dedicated so much time and thought to this gathering. Pamela Thomas Graham, Credit Suisse's Chair of New Markets, Darren Walker, President of the Ford Foundation, and of course, Jeremy Travis, who's helped us understand how incarceration impacts lives far beyond prison walls. Thanks to all of you. And now let's begin. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Beatty. <laughs> 